Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 18th, 2021 edition of the Sand Centered Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary by Daniel, you'll learn how to do network forensics in Microsoft Azure. The trick here is, of course, that unlike in an on-premise network, you don't really have sort of access to switches and uh, you aren't really able to deploy span ports. But Microsoft has a couple of different options for you. First of all, there's Network Watcher. Network Watcher actually delivers a full PCAPs, but only five hours at a time. And then you have to restart this feature. The second option is flow logs. Uh, flow logs or NetFlow is of course always uh, great to look for anomalies or search for indicators of compromise if you're into that. The problem of course is no payload. On the other hand, uh, not that hard to throw NetFlow logs into some kind of log management system like Elasticsearch or Splunk as Daniel points out. And on Friday, so by the time you listen to this, it may be available. Uh, Daniel will post a second diary talking about Azure Monitor Insights and how to use it to keep track of your network traffic. And customers of Ledger, a company that is making hardware cryptocurrency wallets, are apparently being targeted by some relatively sophisticated scams. July last year, Ledger suffered a breach, and as part of this breach, about a quarter million different customer records were leaked. In December of last year, these customer records were actually also made public. And since then, there was a number of attempts to take advantage of these customers. Now note that the breach did not really affect the security of the existing ledger wallets. The data did include personal details like names, mailing addresses and the like of these customers. In the latest scam, customers from this breach are receiving what looks like a modified or tampered Ledger wallet. So the actual wallet appears to be an authentic device that had been tampered with and very likely the private key that's embedded in these devices has been modified. To make this scam more effective, the legit looking package that's actually also still shrink wrapped uh, comes uh, with a letter that suggests that the breach did affect uh, the security of the device that the customer purchased and it offers the included device as a free replacement and does suggest that uh, for security reasons, the customer should transfer their funds to this new wallet. Further investigation of these wallets showed that they had definitely been tampered with, uh, so it's very likely that any funds being transferred to these wallets uh, can be stolen by whoever is behind sending these wallets. These wallets aren't really cheap, they're about $60 new, so considering that they had to be modified, mailed, uh, repackaged and everything, uh, this is uh, not a very simple scam to pull off, but uh, just a small number of wallets, if the victim is actually transferring the funds to them, uh, may probably make up for the cost involved in mailing them out. Remember talking about Internet of Things devices, we often talk about uh, cameras and routers and the like. Uh, we don't really talk a lot about defibrillators, but the latest vulnerability is not in a defibrillator itself. It's in a dashboard that's used by companies to monitor defibrillators that are deployed out in the wild. These dashboards are used uh, to monitor the status of these defibrillators. You may have, for example, seen in airports and other public places like this uh, where defibrillators are sort of being offered for emergency use. And this dashboard will tell you if one of these defibrillators needs maintenance, but it also allows the upload of uh, insecure file types that can lead to remote code execution. It stores credentials in the clear, has hard-coded passwords, and pretty much uh, all of the vulnerabilities that you would expect from a cheap device that you picked up in Walmart's bargain bin. Affected is uh, the defibrillator dashboard by Sol and an update has been made available. 
And yesterday on Thursday, a number of large companies uh, did suffer outages. For example, a couple of airlines uh, like Delta American Southwest and United, as well as, for example, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange did suffer simultaneous outages. The problem was not a denial of service attack, but instead an anti-distributed denial of service attack system uh, run by Akamai. Akamai's prolexic service uh, did go down at approximately 1 a.m. Eastern on Thursday and stayed down for about an hour, which affected all the companies that used this service to protect themselves against distributed denial of service attacks. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.